Good morning, afternoon, evening. Today, kind of working on the RV a little bit. Just doing some cleaning. Haven't really had a chance to use it this year. Not sure why that is. But um, why I'm in here, figured I'd go over some of the things that I've changed. Starting up, up front here, the radio is missing. I have a little 12 volt meter USB port, another cigarette lighter, and an amplifier in the back corner, which plugs into oh, this, so I can play audio through the tablet that sits on those two little holders, which is also my GPS. But I don't have the tablet, because the wife and kids stole it. Okay, they didn't steal it. They took it with them on a trip. Then, I have this old Ryobi flashlight that had the incandescent bulbs. But I changed it. I modified it a little bit. Spray painted the glass black. Drilled a hole. Installed a cigarette plug, lighter plug, whatever you want to call it. So now, if I go on camping trips, I use a, you notice this one says 12 to 24 volts. And those of you who know, the Ryobi batteries are 18 volts. A little modification. All right, moving on back. Everyone knows you gotta have reflectives for your windows. And who doesn't like LED lights? And speaking of LED lights, Swapped out that faucet. And down in here, way down under, we have my water heater. Cold in, hot out. Hot runs through this line into this mixing valve which I have set to about 110 degrees, I think. Comes through there, goes into the hot, the normal plumbing. And you can see the cold line comes in there. Oh, actually I got that backwards. The T here, the white T, the original P, is the cold line input into the hot water tank. There's also a T for winterization which I hijacked and has that coming in as my cold and the hot that mixes and spits out correct temperature water into the hot water system. Let's see here, what other mods did we do? Installed. USB port under the bed oh, with the voltage meter and then on this side another this one specifically is a cigarette lighter of course more reflective that fit behind the window and then my very bright and annoying battery monitor um, only thing I can say is don't go cheap. Get the expensive one because the light does not go out. And it is bright. Moving on to the shower. More reflectives. Of course, LEDs throughout. And... 
Who doesn't like a slow close toilet? Tower rack. I think that might be it. I think it's something else I'll let you know. Oh, rear sway bar. Upgrade the rear sway bar. By the way, that was an amazing improvement. I did forget one thing. We did upgrade the shower head. Yeah, it's mixed results, but it's okay. Um, reality is, after we put in the hot water mixing valve, um, that's really all we need. Because now all we do is we come in here, turn the hot water on. Don't even worry about the cold water side, because it's already set to the correct temperature. Now add on here, I'll show you the actual LEDs that we used. So far I've had them for about two years and they're kind of bright. Uh, um, but as you can see actually on our back one, oh yeah look at that, the lens, those things are amazing. I put a sock on my side the reading light because it's too bright, I don't have a dimmer. Uh, speaking of the zoom or the, uh, I forget what type of lens they're called, but I put one here. So on the driver's seat, I can see vehicles that are coming down the side. And then also if you look at the, oh, it's white out. Let me see if I can fix that. So you can see how much I can see with, well, let me back up just a little bit further. All right. In the driver's seat, the benefit of having a back window, as you can see, the big screen, I can only see that fence and part of the garage. But with the little screen, I can see the road and a little bit left and right, almost the full driveway. Let me get up closer so you can see, zoom out. Let's say no, a little bit more. So from the driver's seat, this is what I can see on the big image. And then obviously the small one, but. All right, I think that's gonna, find, that's gonna be it. That's it, last one. All right, thanks for watching again. A little more, little more detail on the faucets. Has a sprayer. What you call it? Obviously, it pulls out. Sorry, pull the right hand. It's like tapping your head and patting your belly at the same time. Oh, the wife likes cubby baskets. So when we're going somewhere, she loads this thing up. After we get there, and it goes, I think it goes up there or it goes in the sink somewhere. I don't think I still have air. Alright, so it also came with a soap dispenser. So if you know the original faucet has two inlets in and out. So I put the soap dispenser there. And then the right side had the regular faucet. As you can see, top down view. So it's not, obviously it's not centered, so you don't get the perfect left right. But it's actually pretty much centered on this side. And we actually like it. And then just a soap dispenser that we don't use. 
uh, future will probably have a water filter installed there. One of those uh, little trigger water. Yeah, thing with jiggies. What do we... I think that's gonna. I think I'll call it good for now. Although here's the LEDs for. They're like 192s, 194s. They are sensitive to positive, negative. So you put them in backwards, you have to rotate it. So positive side, positive side, negative, negative, which is kind of common with uh, some of the cheaper LEDs. Threw up a little LED in there. Haven't done anything with that monster. Plan to. Nope. Oh, of course, baskets everywhere. This used to have a, a door on it, but I took the door off. That used to have a tiny CRT TV, you know, one of those big old fat, massive things. Took that out. Uh, we had an extra king size memory foam mattress. Ended up cutting, cut, yeah, cut the side down here so it would fit. Baskets everywhere. Oh, there's baskets around here somewhere. More baskets. Storage under the bed. Just have the kids put their luggage bags under there. Uh, when we bought this RV, it's a 2004. The table does not match. Well, it sort of matches. The width of the table is narrower than the ledge here. So what we ended up, well, what I ended up doing, cutting some one by six And the table sits on this to create a level platform. But in order to do that, I also had to lower this ledge down. It was here, and now it's here. So about an inch, which is the difference of the thickness of this. All right, what else do we have here? How about a tool bag? Everybody likes tool bags. Maybe. It's my little tool bag. Leather bin, markers, screwdrivers, bunch of little bits, some hex, vice grips, Extra padlock. Not sure what we do with that. Amazing wire strippers, by the way. It squeezes it and then pulls it apart. Tire pressure gauge for dually. Little screwdrivers. Oh, let's see here. A square bit for all the square 
RV screws. And why I can't find one at the moment. There's one. It's very important. Got some extra tools down here as well. A little bit of that. A hammer. Extra screws. These are self-tapping. I don't remember what I used them for. Some more of those self-tapping almost bolts. Some insulation for the doors. Apparently another one of those. This is for the spin down jacks because we have, you know, a cheapo stabilizing jacks with a drill attachment. I also have this spare tire um, stuff. Some extra, I don't know who that is. Oh, some tape, sewer hose covers that never been used. Here's underneath the sink if you want to see the adapters. I used a uh, Shark Bite PEX adapters, valves, whatever you want to call them. To the, I think it was probably a 3 8, so half inch 3 8. And that is the line that goes into the sink. Two lines there. So there you go, some of the changes we made to our RV, the radio, the kind of accessory was the Ryobi flashlight, the faucet at the sink, hot water mixing valve, the reflectus, shower head, battery monitor. Alright, appreciate it. Thanks for watching.